I would like us to read in the book of uh, uh, the book of Hebrews, chapter number one, uh, from verses number one. The Bible says, "In the past, God spoke to our forefathers through the prophets in many times and in various ways, but in these last days." He has spoken to us by his son, whom he appointed the heir of all things, through whom he made the universe. And verse 3 says, The son is the radiance of God's glory and an exact representation of his being. The verse that I want us to, uh, to note, the Bible says, Sustaining all things, by his powerful word. After he had provided purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty of heaven. Through this verse, we are able to see that the word of God has authority to control the processes and the operations of the earth or the operations of the universe, when you look at the things that happens around us, the word of God is so instrumental to up in upholding the processes and the programs that happens on the earth. After the creation of the universe, God did not just leave things to run as they wish. The Bible says he established a mechanism of management. And the Bible says it is through the word of God that whatever happens on the face of the universe is upheld. The word upheld also means managed, maintained, controlled. I also want you to know that the word of God was involved at the point of creation. If we read the book of Hebrews chapter 11 and verses number 3, the Bible says through faith we understand that the world's the Bible uses, says the world, meaning the universe was framed. So the universe has a framework. So the Bible says the universe was framed by the word of God so that the things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. So the word of God was involved at the point of creation. And in the process of managing what happens around us, including managing us, because we are part of God's creation, it is, has been committed to the word. So the word of God has unlimited authority to manage the creation, how nature interacts with every part of creation. It manages how we relate with anything that God created. It has all been put in the care of the word. So I can say that the word of God takes responsibility. Things don't drive themselves. They are driven by the word. The word takes charge of the things that we see and of the things that happen around us in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So the other question I want to ask is how do we Activate this word. Because we have said that the word of God has authority, then how do we enjoy the benefit of this word? And the first thing that you need to know is that you must first locate where the word of the Lord is. You must first locate the word. You must first locate that word. The Bible says in the book of Romans, Chapter 10 from verses number 8. But what does it say? The word is near you. It is in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith we are proclaiming. That if you confess in your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your mouth that you believe and are justified. And it is with your mouth that you confess and are saved. 
So the Bible says, the word is near you. It is in your mouth. It is in your heart. Those are the three levels of the word. The word near me, the word in my mouth, and the word in my heart. For you to exercise authority of this word, the word of God, number one, you need to locate where this word is. The word near me, I want to tell you, this could be the word in your Bible. The word that is written in your Bible. You need to move it from near you to your mouth and to your heart. The word comes to your mouth and also to your heart. The word in your mouth is the word that you speak. The word in your heart is the word that you meditate. For this word to benefit you, you must move it from near you. Read the word. It is good to have the word written in your Bible. It is good to own the Bible, yes, but it is good for you to study the Bible. That is how we transfer the word from the position near us to our heart and to our mouth. Bible says in the book of Joshua chapter 1 and verses 8 that do not let this word of law depart from your mouth. Speak it. Meditate it day and night. So the first thing you need to do, according to the scripture, is that you must move that word from near you to your heart and to your mouth. Speaking it. And number two, I want to say, believe and have faith in the word of God. When the Lord speaks, the way to connect with the word is to believe it, is to have faith in the word of God. Elisha, he knew the word that he had received from the Lord was so specific. The word spoke about tomorrow. And he could see from the eyes of the flesh that it was not possible, humanly speaking. But because he knew the one who spoke and he believed in him, it was not difficult for him to even communicate it. So whenever the Lord speaks to you, believe in the word of the Lord. Have faith in the word of the Lord. And number three, I want to say confess it. Confess the word of the Lord. Make it public. When Elisha received the word, he did not keep it to himself. He shared the word. He spoke the word. The Bible says in the book of uh, Psalms chapter 68 and verses number 11, the Lord gave the word and great was the company of those that proclaimed it. Whenever the Lord speaks the word, the way to partner with the word, the way to benefit from the word is by confessing the word. And that is why to us as a church, God has been so gracious to us. To us, this season is the season of declaration. The season of making public. The season of making proclamation of the things the Lord has told us. And the Lord spoke to Mary and said, Blessed is he who believes that whatever he has been told by the Lord shall come to pass. And I want to tell you, my, my dear friends, that the word you have received from the Lord, one way of benefiting from that word is by confessing it. Speak it. Great is the company. Join the company. The Bible says part of this company were women. That great was the company, as recorded in Psalm 68 and verses 11. Great is the company of they that proclaimed it. I don't know whether you have a word for this particular season. I don't know what the Lord has spoken to you concerning this season. Are you walking with the word? Is there a word that guides you? Is there a word that you are focusing into? Have you received any word from the servant of the Lord for this season? Have you received any word from the Lord for this particular season? I want to ask you this question. What is the Lord telling you amidst all these things? It is good to listen to what the experts are telling us. It is good to listen to what the medical 
people are telling us. It is good to listen to the expert. They will have their story to tell. But whose report shall you believe? What is the Lord telling you in this particular season? What word do you carry for your family? What word do you carry for your business? What word do you carry for your ministry? What word do you carry for your career? I have been listening to servants of God speak. And one of them said the Lord told him that coronavirus will end earlier than expected. And I believe that is the word of the Lord, spoken by a man of God, that the coronavirus will end earlier than expected. We will confess that word, that may this season, the season of affliction, may God bring it to an end earlier than expected. In the name of Jesus. By the word of the Lord. The Lord spoke to the people living in Samaria. And he told them tomorrow. God is able to bring your season of suffering to an end. In the other part of our sharing we said. That the word of God has authority over time and process. So that is one of the words we have received. When I was reading my Bible. Uh, in this particular from... Uh, the book of Second Kings, one of uh, the titles that is given in that particular package of scripture is that the siege is lifted. And I want to believe by the word of God that the siege is lifted. The other title that was given is that the enemy took off. And I believe in this season our enemy is taking off in the name of Jesus. So, the word that the Lord has given us is meant to work for us in this particular season. It will secure our home. It will secure our families. It will secure our children. It will secure our career. It will secure whatever we are doing for the glory of God. Every time God speaks, the word of God Locate, keep locating who is available to deliver the manifestation of the word. Every time God speaks to his people, every time God speaks to a nation, every time God speaks to a family, the word of the Lord, every time it is released, it keep locating who is available to deliver the manifestation of the word. I am not very sure that the lepers heard the word that was spoken by Elisha. But I want to believe in my heart that they were found ready, number one. They were nominated to actualize that very word the Lord spoke. I pray that for the prophetic word we have received from the Lord, for our nation, for our churches, and for our family. May you be nominated to be the person. May you be found ready to execute the fulfillment of the word of the Lord for the nation and for your family. The lepers, they were found ready. And one of the things the word of God did to them the Bible says they were empowered to make a decision. And they asked each other, why should we stay here until we die? I don't know, and we are not told for how long they had stayed at the gate of Samaria. We are not told. But the Bible says this very moment, they engaged each other with questions. One of the empowerment the word of God releases to God's people is the capacity to make decisions. It empowered them to make decisions. Capacity number two is the capacity to take calculated risks. And they decided we will go to the enemy's camp. If they kill us, we die. And the Bible says they took off and they started the journey to go to the Syrian camp. But something that is so interesting in verses number six, 
I can start from verses 5. The Bible says, At dusk they got up and went to the camp of the Arameans. When they reached the end of the camp, not a man was there. Verse 6, For the Lord had caused the Arameans to hear the sound of the chariots and horses and, and a great army so that they said to one another, Look, the king of Israel has hired the Hittites and the Egyptian, the Egyptian kings to attack us. So the Bible says, when they made a decision to go to the enemy's camp, the Lord amplified their steps. I was trying to study one of the effects or one of the conditions that reprose can subject one to. And it says, one of the conditions is that it can bring disability. And I believe these people may have not been physically strong. They may have not been strong. But the Bible says, when they took the step to go to the enemy's camp, the Lord caused their enemies to hear. Any time you take a journey under the command and under the leadership of the Lord, there is the power of God that backs you. There is the power of God that supports you. The Bible says, God caused their enemies to hear. When they started moving, they were, it was a reported that a great army is coming to attack us. The journey you have started, the journey you are taking to wherever the Lord has sent you, you are not alone. The Lord is behind you. The Lord will support you. The Lord will go with you. The Lord will stand with you. He supported the lepers. They appeared weak in the eyes of men, but because they were with God, God made them to appear like a bigamy. And the Bible says the enemies took off. And when they reached in the Aramean's camp, they realized they have deserted the camp and they went in and took whatever they were looking for. And to cut the story short, the Bible says, when they entered into the city, they found enough food and whatever they were looking for. And they took for themselves and reported the message back to the king. And there was good news in the city of Samaria. And the Bible says, when the message reached the king, the king sent a delegation to go and inspect, to go and spy to confirm whether whatever was reported to him was true. And it was reported and said that it is true, the enemy has fled. So as I come to the end, verse number 16, the Bible says, then the people went out, and plundered the camp of the Aramean. So a seer of Ra sold for a shekel, and two seers of Bari sold for a shekel, as the Lord had said. In other words, according to the word that was spoken by the man of God, Elisha. In verses number 17, there was a casualty. The man who did not have respect for the word of God. The Bible says, and now the king had put the officer on whose arm he leaned in charge of the gate. And the people trampled him in the gateway and he died just as the man of God had foretold when the king came down to his house. It happened as the man of God had said to the king about this time tomorrow. A seer of Ra will sell for a shekel and two seers of Bari for a shekel at the gate of Samaria. I want you to know in this season that whatever the Lord has spoken, it is firmly established and that word shall come to pass. Believe in the word of the Lord. Trust in the Lord. Whatever he has spoken to you, whatever he has promised you, 
He is able to do and do in the time he has promised. Don't doubt the word of God. Believe in the word of God. The word of God carries power to hold your life. It carries power to hold your family. It carries power to hold your destiny. Your destiny is in the hands of God. And I believe as we continue in this season, none of us should lose hope. I want to urge that as we continue in this season, let us not lose our focus. It is good to listen to what people are saying, but it is good to listen unto what the Lord is saying and keep our hope and faith alive in God. Because he that has promised is faithful. He that has promised is faithful. And whatever he has told you, I believe that the Lord is able to do. And it happened in the city of Samaria that whatever the Lord had promised the people of God through the servant of God, Elisha, the Lord did it. Because the Lord is not just good in giving promises, but the Bible says he watches over every word he has spoken to fulfill it. And I believe that God is going to honor the word he has spoken to your life. The Lord is going to honor the word he has spoken to us as Kenya. And I believe in this season, the siege will be lifted. I believe we are coming out victorious. Coronavirus is defeated in Jesus' name. And I believe that Kenya and the countries of the world are secure in the hand of God. And I believe that the purposes of God over, over, the, uh, over, the, uh, over the people of God is secure and safe. None of us should lose hope. None of us should lose their focus. We need to believe in the Lord. And so the Lord bless you. Thank you for listening to us. Uh, thank you for the time you have taken to be with us. I believe that the word the Lord has spoken to us is a great blessing to your family. It's a great blessing to your marriage. It's a great blessing to the country, to our country, in the name of Jesus. Just bow down for a word of prayer. Our Father and our God, I want to thank you for allowing us to receive your word. Thank you for reminding us that the word of God has authority over time and process. And also to remind us that your word has authority of a process in the systems of the universe. We want to thank you that our lives are secure under the watch of your word. And I pray for every family and every individual and anyone representing any kind of institution. I pray that you bless them. I pray that you preserve them. As you preserved the lepers for the assignment you kept for them, may you preserve our people for the assignment you have kept for us. And I pray that even as we continue, that, Lord, you will restore our hope. You will restore our strength. And you keep us firmly focused in you. Nothing will sway us from your path. But we will remain focused. We will remain committed to the cause and to the work that you have given us to do. We thank you and we bless you. For this we ask in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Thank you for watching us. And I want to believe that every opportunity to receive the word of God is also an opportunity to give to God. And I believe that the Lord has blessed you and you can bless the work of God. And therefore, I want to invite you to support the work that God has called us to do in this place by giving your offering. And I also believe those of us who fellowship at uh, Gospel Celebration Church, Kayore, you could be having your tithe. We want to welcome you to give your tithe. We have given you the numbers on the screen. Please use them and share with us what the Lord has blessed you with. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. Amen. I also want to believe that there are people who are watching us who are not born again, but through the receiving of the word of God, you want to make your walk right with God by receiving Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And therefore, I want to give you this golden opportunity so that you can make peace with God. And I want to ask you to make a prayer of repentance and to say after me, Lord Jesus, 
I welcome you into my heart. I confess my sins, and I ask you that you forgive me. Help me to walk in the walk of righteousness, and that I may follow you all the days of my life. I confess you, and I receive you in my life as my Lord and Savior. Amen. Thank you for making that decision. And we believe the Lord will bless you, the Lord will go with you, the Lord will preserve you for his purpose. But for the purposes of uh, just getting to know you, we want to ask you to communicate to us. We have given you our contacts, our telephone numbers, through them, just write to us so that we can get back to you. We are looking forward that after this, we will resume back to our fellowship, meeting together as life come back to normal. The Lord bless you. Tiki sika kamwe 